In this video, we're going to show you how to log into WebWork here at University of Wisconsin La Crosse. If this were your email address, take the part before the at sign, make that the username, and that's also the password. So we're not talking about the password that you use for D2L and Wings and all that kind of stuff. Use the same thing as your username and password to log in. Um, if you'd like to, you can, of course, change your password. Just do that through the user settings. Um, but what we're going to do is take a look at the assignments that are here. There happen to be just three in this, this fake system that I created, um, and you can take a look at the deadline. Deadlines. Um, of course, these are the final deadlines. Uh, very often, you're going to want to do the homework assignments a little bit before than the actual due date. So let's look at the sample assignment number one, which has uh, nine problems in it. You can actually see that I have logged in earlier and done one of the questions. That's why there's a 100% here. Um, but I haven't done problem number one, so let's go ahead and just pretend to do that. But before doing that, I'll just point out that if you'd like to, you can download a PDF copy of an assignment by clicking here. This has its pros and cons. It's actually sort of nice to work outside of the system every once in a while. Um, some people get in the habit of just trying the problems, attempting them only through the system, and if something's wrong, it's so convenient to just type in a new answer and type in a new answer, and then it's hard to see the sort of the growth or the figure out what's going on. So um, it's, I think, very advantageous to download a copy, maybe print it out if you like, um, try the problems on paper, ideally in a separate notebook, and then um, when you're ready, you can come back and type all the answers in. Of course, one thing you don't want to do, one way this backfires, is you don't want to be typing in all those answers, you know, at 11.50 on the 30th, because what if one of those answers is wrong or something, right? So you, you, it's sort of good to try some problems, go back, sign into the system um, without the distraction of just guessing and checking, and then go plug them in, and any ones that don't work, you can go back and try again. So let's go ahead and open problem number one. And we'll read the question here, which says solve for x in the following equation. This is a quadratic equation, x squared minus 5x plus 3 equals 0. I'm going to go ahead and work out that solution uh, right here for you. So this uh, doesn't look like it's going to factor, but you can just use the quadratic formula. So there are two solutions, of course. Um, written compactly, x is equal to negative b, b is negative 5, plus or minus square root of, well, b, again, negative 5, squared minus four times a, which is one, times c, which is three, all over uh, two a, or so two times one, but we won't even write the two times one, we'll just write a two here um, for the sake of simplicity. And what I'd like to do in this video, the key idea is to save a lot of time and avoid aggravation. If you're on a Mac, uh, which I'm not here. You're going to want to use a program that's provided called Text Edit, but be sure to make sh uh, first go to the Format menu and choose Plain Text. Um, if you're on a Windows computer, you're going to want to use Notepad. So I've already used Notepad here, a standard text editor um, provided by Windows. Um, and let me go back to the solution and show you how this is actually going to be useful because one of our solutions is of the form something divided by something, right? So that two in the denominator right there. You can put any number of spaces you want in between, um, even just temporarily. I find it a little helpful. So here we've got negative and then negative five. That's from right here. And let's only take a look at the plus sign right now. Um, and then square root, that's SQRT of, and actually I'll just go ahead and draw that set of parentheses. The thing that we're taking the square root of is negative 5 quantity squared minus 4 times 1 times 3. That whole thing should go inside this set of parentheses right here. So you'll have negative 5 quantity squared um, minus 4 times 1 times 3. So I believe all the parentheses are set quite correctly here. So you've got that left paren. Um, to the left of the negative 5, to the right of the negative 5, those close each other off, and then this left paren corresponds to that. And if you build things slowly here through a text editor, you can kind of see how things fit, and you can leave the spaces. The system that we're typing into is not going to care, or if you feel like it, you can get rid of all those spaces. Now, what I like to do, because there's a second solution with this minus sign, is simply copy and paste, control C, control V, and change that plus sign right there to a minus sign. Um, in web work, when you have multiple solutions, you can just separate the two solutions by a, a comma. So I'm going to highlight all that text by pressing Control A and then Control C to copy. And then I'll go back to the web where all I have to do is now paste that in here. Now this is just so much better than typing in this little input box, which is just so tiny. If you use the arrow keys to go back and forth, you can see that it's all in here. But it's just so much work to type that in here, especially since the two answers that we have are so similar. It was really very useful to use a text editor 
like this. Okay, so now that I've pasted in, I've really taken advantage of using copy paste in Notepad on Windows or text edit for Mac. Now I can click preview my answer if, I, if, if I'm a little unsure and go, yep, that looks like what I intended to type in. Sometimes the computer's gonna misinterpret you. If you have unlimited attempts, I guess this doesn't matter, but if you only have a few attempts to work with, you might wanna check. These look good, I'm happy with those. So then you can click submit. And if we have the right answer, aha, we do, then you'll see this green horizontal bar. If you see that, there's no further action you have to do. You're completely done. You will earn the credit on this question. It might show up in the grading system a little later because um, it takes a couple days to, to transfer everything over, but there is credit on that. And if you go back to the assignment uh, one, you'll see in the problems list now a 100% next to problem number one as well.